Hello, my name is Dr. Jacob yes! Judas. Yes! Welcome to another episode of Mastering Quantum Mechanics Through Problems, although in today's lesson, I'm not actually going to solve any problems. In the future presentations, I'm going to solve several problems related to today's lesson. Terrific! The title of this talk is Everything You Need to Know About Quantum Mechanical Spin in a Clear, Understandable Lesson. In today's presentation, I'm going to talk all about quantum mechanical spin, and I'm going to teach it to you in a way, hopefully, that's clear, concise, interesting, and well put together. By explaining these ideas, you're going to learn about spin, as well as many of the concepts in this crazy subject known as quantum mechanics. On this slide, I'm going to tell you about some important properties of elementary particles. On the next slide, I'll use a gyroscope to help visualize these ideas. Every elementary particle has a specific intrinsic angular momentum. It can be thought of as if the particle is a tiny ball spinning about its axis. Every elementary particle has a specific and immutable value of spin, denoted S. The value of the particle's angular momentum can be obtained from the particle's intrinsic spin. The spin is not the angular momentum, but it's related to the angular momentum by this important formula. The angular momentum of a particle is equal to h bar, this is Planck's constant, times the square root of s times s plus 1. And these are the different spin values of various particles. For example, a pi meson, also known as a pion, has a spin 0. Therefore, it has an angular momentum of 0, because if you place s with 0, you get h bar times 0. By the way, h bar has units of angular momentum. An electron has a spin of 1 half. If you replace s with 1 half, you see that the electron has an angular momentum of the square root of 3 by 2 times h bar. A photon, which is a particle of light, has a spin 1, and therefore it has a total angular momentum of 2 times h bar. The value Lz equals h bar times s represents the maximum value of the spin angular momentum component along a chosen direction parallel to the magnetic field. This is often denoted as the z-axis. This is a gyroscope. And we can think of this as an elementary particle like a proton or an electron. And the protons or electrons have spin, which means they have intrinsic angular momentum. I'm going to give the gyroscope some angular momentum. All right. So now the gyroscope has angular momentum. And so it's spinning. And you can see it's spinning like this. And so we would think of this as the elementary particle. The elementary particle is constantly spinning. The thing is, the elementary particle can't change its spin. In the case of the gyroscope, I can slow this down, or I could pull harder and speed it up, and then it would be spinning quicker or, or slower. With an elementary particle, that's not the case. When I place the gyroscope on its stand, it begins to precess or wobble due to the torque from gravity. As the gyroscope slows down, the Z component of its angular momentum decreases gradually, causing it to tip over. This component changes continuously, not in jumps. Elementary particles with spin also precess, but they do so in a magnetic field rather than a gravitational one. The physics behind this is the same as with a current loop in a magnetic field. However, unlike the gyroscope, the Z component of an elementary particle's angular momentum can only take on specific, discrete values ranging from negative s to positive s in integer steps. Here's an animation to help you visualize this. This is a spin one-half particle. The vector going through the center is the total angular momentum, which is the square root of 3h bar by 2. There's a magnetic field. This is a permanent magnet. Magnetic field always goes from the north and ends at the south. If you turn on the magnetic field, the particle will process in the magnetic field. And as the magnetic field strength increases, it will process quicker. And the projection along the z-axis never changes. It's always h bar over 2. This slide is titled, All Formulas for Spin Angular Momentum in One Concise Location. The spin state of a particle is represented by the ket s, m, where s denotes the spin quantum number and m represents the z component of angular momentum. The magnetic field points upward. The state plus plus corresponds to this picture, which has h bar over 2 parallel to the magnetic field, and minus, which is 1 half minus 1 half, corresponds to this state, which has h bar over 2 anti-parallel to the magnetic field. We say this is minus h bar over 2. This slide, along with the next, highlight the key features of a particle with spin in a magnetic field. While the focus is on the spin one-half case, the formulas presented are applicable to particles of any spin. This equation gives the total angular momentum of a particle with intrinsic spin s. The operator s squared acts on the spin state sm 
to yield total angular momentum h bar squared s times s plus 1. These results are grounded in experimental physics, which we describe by using precise mathematical equations. The second formula focuses on the z component of angular momentum. Here, sz acts on the spin state to yield h bar m, where m ranges from negative s to plus s in integer values. For example, for a spin one half particle processing in a magnetic field, m can take on only two values, plus or minus one half. Again, this is all experimental facts, and these equations are how we represent it mathematically. The final equation on the bottom involves raising and lowering operators s plus and s minus. These operators allow us to move the spin state between different m values. It's an experimental fact that the z component of angular momentum is quantized, meaning it can only take on discrete values. These latter operators are crucial in the mathematical framework that explain how spin states can transition from one m value to another. Again, it's important to understand that this is all a mathematical framework to explain the relatively simple picture on the right. The spin processes around the magnetic field, and it can only do so with quantized values of z components of angular momentum. This is the spin one-half case, and there's two possible z components of angular momentum, and the spin vector processes around the magnetic field. This is an example of spin two. So spin two can have z component two h bar, one h bar, zero h bar, minus one h bar, minus two h bar, and each one of these process around the z axis. Things get more complex when we start discussing measurement, which we'll cover shortly. So I have two more slides, which are a thought experiment. And these are titled, The Precise Principle That Governs the Behavior of the Quantum World. Let's consider a particle in the plus z state. If someone asks for the z component of its angular momentum, we can confidently say it's h bar over 2. There's a magnetic field pointing upward. This is the spinning particle. And this particle is in state plus z. And if we make a measurement on this particle, we know that it's going to have h bar over 2 pointing upward parallel to the magnetic field. If we ask about the x component, the answer is less certain. Measuring the spin in the x direction has a 50-50 chance of being h bar over 2 or minus h bar over 2. A spin up state is equal to half h bar over 2 in the plus x direction and half h bar over 2 in the minus x direction. I just want to know what is the exact x component of the spin angular momentum. I know the z component is h bar divided by 2. I want to know the x component. Can you please just tell me what that is? The particle simply doesn't have a well-defined x component of spin. Having both spin x and spin z well-defined would violate the uncertainty principle. If the state is in spin up, it's equal to half spin left and half spin right. If someone measures spin x and they get plus h bar over 2, they might claim the particle always had that value. But the truth is, the measurement changed the particle's state. If you were initially in a linear combination of spin left and spin right, when you made the measurement, if you got a state spin plus h bar over 2, the measurement changed the spin state. The particle can exist in multiple spin states at once. And yes, measuring it messes with those states. That's just how quantum mechanics rolls. So buckle up and embrace the weirdness. This corresponds to spin up. If you're in this state and you measure the spin z again, it might no longer be h bar over 2. This is outrageous. This illustrates that the particle's spin components along different axes can't be simultaneously well defined. And measurement affects the state, aligning it with the measured component. The idea that a particle's position, momentum, or spin isn't well defined may seem strange to those unfamiliar with quantum mechanics. However, this uncertainty is not only a fundamental aspect of quantum theory, but it's a precise and critical principle that governs the behavior of the quantum world. This uncertainty is the whole concept behind quantum mechanics. That wasn't what I wanted. AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. H. AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. Hewitt.